I think part of what triggered the episode we're currently in, which is the, you know, the biggest crisis of our marriage was. Hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of a very awkward, <laughs> chilly. Limited edition. <laughs> very limited. I've been a little strained over here. Yeah. Well, I've been on the road. I mean, I've been working a lot. Let's just do an interview. You, you're like David Letterman and I'm your guest. So what's been going on, Dave? So I hear you and China have been having some problems. Do you want to talk about that? On national television? I mean, no better time than now. You know, I understand these things. I haven't had a perfect marriage. Definitely been some struggles. Don't know exactly how deep into these issues we want to get on national television, knowing that our children may watch this this interview um, at some point either in the uh, next Ah, come week. on, you don't have children anymore. You've got adults. Right, right, right. Well, I need help. I need help. You need help? Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Some uh, issues going on in my personal life, in my marriage, but... Stop beating around the bush. Working. Listen, working you've only on got me. like six minutes in airtime. We're doing three segments. Your producer promised me. You said you have issues. Let's talk about your issues. Oh, I've got your new book here. So should we discuss your book? It's a great title. The title is uh, How I Went from a Narcissistic Grandiose Son of a <laughs> to a Decent Guy. <laughs> Do you want to tell us a little bit about your book? <laughs> yeah. I'm dying. It's the sequel that I wrote um, <laughs> to the book I wrote about my wife. <laughs> okay, what's the title of the <laughs> That book was called Selfish, Lazy, Spoiled, Entitled Brat. Yes. Uh, who, um, <laughs> who is slightly imbalanced <laughs> and suffers massively from an anxiety disorder. I'm surprised your publishers didn't have you shorten that title. Yeah. Well, you know me, I always vomit it all out, it all comes out. Yeah, as I was saying, it was a New York Times bestseller. Uh, you know, it saved many, many marriages, that book. Yeah. So you guys have been together 31 years. It's 31 very, years. Very, very long time. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the audience is applauding. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. That's a long time to be married. I you mean, know how they say in like dog years, mm -hmm. 31 years in Hollywood is a century. Yeah. I love the way we spontaneously came up with this David Letterman interview. It's great. I know. I went for a walk on the beach with Pokey. Don't make fun of my big feet. She always does. But look, I got a huge tar ball on my heel. Here she comes, just a running down the beach, singing do I can't get it off. Uh, send me some tips in the future how I might be able to get rid of that quickly. So do you think you and China are going to pull through? I certainly hope so. Working hard. I've been praying every day. and You've been praying? So are you a born-again Christian like she is? No. Do you mm -hmm. think she wants you to be a born again Christian? Yeah. China's one of the sweetest women I've ever met in my life, I have to say. I mean, when she was on my show, I was, I really, she left an impression on me. I know, I mean, but you've met her, lovely you met her twice, and I've lived with her for 31 years. And you're right about all those what things. What a lovely Everybody lady. knows I, that about I, China. I honestly think that to whatever you did, I bet you she's forgiven you as best as she humanly can. You know? So then we're going to be fine. If she, if she has forgiven me, then we're ready to roll. Well, yeah, I, mean, I don't think this is about forgiveness, but I honestly believe that that your wife has forgiven you. I think that the, that really it's just a matter of how do you navigate, you know, being sort of not feeling those, you know, I'm sending you 12 dozen roses and buying you Tiffany jewelry and, you know, the whole love bombing thing that happens in the beginning of marriages, you know. You can't live up to that forever. And then real life comes and then, you know, you've got, you know, children, which just freaking shred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the marriage. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? You really sacrifice like over 20 years of your life. In the middle, you meet, you fall in love, you're dating, you get married, you have a couple of years you're planning a family, and all of a sudden you get hit with this reality. And, you know, every child you have from cutting the umbilical cord till they're about 25 or 26 years old. And our oldest is 22 and our youngest is 17. So we're getting there. Life gets in the way, and you're raising children. And then uh, you confront some very, very serious, intense stuff in your lives. Just stuff that's happened here. We, I to, as I've said before, we had the fire and the mudslide. You all know Granny Jacks, Granny Jacks passing away, the, the, the pandemic hitting. You have to really not take care of one another. You have to take care, take care of yourself in order to really, really be able to help take care of each other in a healthy way. We talked about that before on this and everybody love that we were talking about this and they were all sort of agreeing they all thought that we were right and i really want to make a commitment to 
China, Dave, making myself more of a priority. China, by the way, is like a fifth degree black belt at, at this. I've always said that. She's always really good at taking care of herself in order to be able to take care of the rest of her life. Which so, is, so you think making yourself the priority is going to make... Well, you, China, China used to do that, and then she made Jesus the priority, uh -huh. which is great, and then she made herself the priority because she always used to say to me, I can't love you until I love myself first, and I hear a lot of people say that, and that's something I've always had difficulty with and always struggled with. I'm very much looking forward to the next phase of my relationship with China, Dave. Yeah, man. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to cover? I think that your airtime is coming to an end. You want to wrap this up? There's so much more fun stuff to talk about. Yeah. But do you want to do it as to use David Letterman the whole time? No, not really. Hey, Billy Baldwin, it's been a pleasure having you on our show. I hope you'll come back, and I hope that you and China make it. I really do. You guys make a great couple. You know, you guys are truly Hollywood legends. You know, I'm sorry about your careers, but other than that, you really are legendary. Great to see you, man. Okay, you too. Come back. All right, thanks, everybody. Billy Baldwin, ladies and gentlemen. And lo and behold, we're back. Dave had to take a pee break. And uh, look who jumped into the host seat right here, China Phillips. Hi, guys. We're going to continue this interview between China and <laughs> Billy now. Let's get into it. Uh, it's important after 30 years for a couple to having things to do in common. Yeah. Uh, events, functions, hobbies. Yeah. We could do so much better. We really need to make us a priority. We really, really do. We really have to go out of our way to make each other feel great about the relationship, make each other feel great about each other, make each other feel attended to. Make... Yeah, it's not an easy task, is it? I mean, pe I don't think it's, it's... people make it look easy sometimes, but really a lot of work goes into that. You know, you know we I, put I... all this stuff out there. That's why I say sometimes I feel like a little bit of a fraud when I'm on Chile, because we put all this great fun stuff out there about us that is 1000% true. But when the camera's not rolling, the other side of life comes in. We definitely feel like the relationship isn't working for us the way we want it to. And I hate that the major obstacle to that consistency is life getting in the way. Do you ever think that there's the potential that you could have it better than you've had it in years and years, or well, maybe better I than you've I ever had it? I had that a lot 12 years ago. I mean, that's why we renewed our vows. That's why we decided we were gonna turn everything around and we were going to be the partners we needed for each other. So and now that we're kind of back at square one, 12 years later, it's a little daunting, a little frustrating. Right, but you know we you know we can do it. Yeah. And by I, the way, right before I left for Italy to go to Rome, we had like this incredible, it was yeah, kind of magical. I think because the floodgates opened and we started being super honest with each other. I mean, communication but that's is great. everything. But communication, I mean, you just can't put a price tag on communication in mm -hmm. a relationship. Please. I liked what our therapist said yesterday about if the um, husband is driving in a way that feels reckless to the wife and makes her nervous and makes right. her scared that um, she will continuously say, you know, please, you're driving too fast, slow down, I don't, you know, what are you doing? You're being reckless, and then they have the same fight. No, I'm not, this is the way I drive, you drive different, accept it, but, you know, and then they have the same argument for years until finally the woman is able to say, listen, you can drive however you want to drive. Yeah. It is your choice. I'm it's just your, not getting in the car It's anymore. your prerogative. But when I'm in the car, what I'm asking you to do, because it makes me anxious and makes me uncomfortable, yeah. is to drive the speed limit and not switch lanes constantly and not tailgate. Can you do that for me while I'm in the car? Right, and I think that's a problem because I think that's what he's talking about. The one big problem is the way I drive causes problems for the marriage for you and the way you drive causes problems for the marriage for me. And we have to figure out a way to to make that work be curious and of course sensitive and kind when examining and, and dealing with your subject subjective it's a experience. highly emotionally intelligent thing to be able to do there can be a revival there could be a renewal and a revival and like I just think it could be really beautiful what do you think do you think you've heard it all before i uh, know no 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 i think that um a lot of it is obviously about self-awareness and being able to re self-reflect and being able to self-regulate emotions. Self-regulating emotions is probably one of the most difficult things in a relationship for either partner, you know, to not fly mm -hmm. off the handle or to not raise your voice or to not get up and walk away. It's it, Sometimes mm -hmm. getting up and walking away is a good thing, but you know what I'm saying. I don't raise my voice. I escalate, I get urgent, I get intense, but I'm just getting passionate. I'm trying to prove a point. So yeah, I understand when you're talking about, when you're talking about me, 
uh, getting emotional and getting angry and getting upset when we're like miscommunicating and it's escalating into a fight. But a lot of times I'm afraid to say anything just because it's not unicorns and cotton candy and but rainbows. That's, the thing. that's like, self regulation right there. You being able to determine, wow, okay, I really want to talk about this. Is today the day that I should bring this up to China? You know, is it so urgent that it can't wait until tomorrow? Or could I say to China, hey, there's something really important that I'd love to talk to you about. Would you it's, let me know when it's a good time? We used to have lunch. something called business meetings and it was nice because we would sit down and we would just block off an hour, 45 minutes, and we would just talk about, each of us talk about the issues that we're having. I would give him his turn, he would give me my my turn, and then we would- Remember the talking stick? Resolution, <laughs> yeah, and then we'd have this thing called the talking stick, where if you're holding the stick, you can't say a word. No, when no, you're holding the stick, you get you to talk. You can talk, and then, if, eh, yeah. You pass it back and forth. Right, you had a real problem with the talking stick. I think part of what triggered the episode we're currently in, which is the, you know, the biggest crisis of our marriage, there just was this planetary alignment of variables that came together. I, I don't know, maybe that's why, what triggered and part of what could have contributed to of course. What, what caused, what caused this it's problem in the first thing. place. one thing, you know, this is life. You get dealt things that are horrible. I mean, people lose children in car accidents. People, you know, get diagnosed right, and they don't with make brain it. tumors. And they don't make know? it. Right, but sometimes they do. Yeah, well, you know? that's what I'm shooting for. Yeah, relationships in general, marriages in general. Um, there's gonna be some dark, dark, deep waters. I always say, thy will be done, thy will be done. And I know clearly that, you know, God loves marriage and wants marriage to, you know, succeed. Yeah, I've been holding on to this cross a lot over the past six months that we've been having our issues and I've just been holding on to it and gripping it and praying and, you know, praying about everything. You know, sometimes people go their separate ways. I just, when I think about you and I for the next five years, 10 years, 20 years, and after our children and spending the rest of our lives together, I see uh, so much fun and so much potential and so much love. So we have to see what happens. You wanna say a prayer? Sure, let's say a prayer. Um, dear Jesus, uh, thank you for this time with my wife. So much, so many blessings, so many gifts. Our marriage, our home, our children, fun with our friends on California preaching. Thank you for this conversation and uh, this full fun, you know. Thank you for the work that we're doing in couples therapy. And thank you to just bring the fun and the joy back to our friendship and our partnership and our marriage and the healing. And I, as I always say to China, I really feel like we can do the work to make it more fun and happier and healthier and stronger than ever. Right in Jesus' name. Beautiful prayer, Bill. Peace of Christ. <laughs> Just wanted to remind you guys that California Healing will be starting soon. It's going to be a really special time of bonding and sharing and praising and worshiping, getting closer to God and getting closer to one another. I just know you're not going to want to miss out on this really intimate, very healing experience. And yeah, I'm going to let you guys know when we are ready to sign up. Hi, my sweet Bible babes. This is the China and Bond CD. This CD is Holy Spirit activated. It was completely downloaded from heaven. I will sign it for you and you can get it at CaliforniaPreaching.com. Don't miss out. All right, let's go. Hey friends, if this video blessed you in any way, I pray that you will subscribe and that you will press that little bell because that little bell will give you an alert every single time there's a brand new Cal Preach. And remember, sharing is caring. You never know who's gonna find the peace of Christ.